Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast Radio Show, coming to you on this Friday, March the 8th, 2024. Hopefully it finds you staying safe and staying sweaty all at the same time. On today's episode, we are talking about how to stop eating junk food and seven ways, hopefully, to get control, why it is so tough, why it's so difficult, how we grew up, those of us who are, you know, elder millennials over uh, 40 and beyond, and uh, just try to walk through uh, some of the things that I've done and what I've seen work best for our clients and the things that kind of help you, you know, when you can't resist chips and cookies and ice cream and uh, just know it's normal to feel that way. And uh, a lot of people can't stop overeating uh, on certain types of foods, typically those highly processed foods. Uh, They're designed to be uh, obviously hyper palatable and irresistible, and that's how it works. And we're going to talk what you can do about it. Now, a couple of housekeeping things before I jump in. One, uh, I am coming to you guys from Heather's home office. She's been gone for over a week. So I have two dogs here walking around, and sometimes they get at each other. I took them for a walk, so we should be okay. But I got a 14-year-old, and I got a puppy here. So it is a handful. So if a FedEx guy or UPS comes or they just start to go bonkers, uh, my apologies off the top. Uh, now, before we kick in the episode, one, obviously you guys know the Jeremy Scott Fitness app is live, but our next challenge is kicking off here on March the 18th. It is our 30 for 30 challenge. Uh, we've run this one other time inside of the app in terms of programming. It's something that uh, I think is one of the best things that we have put out in terms of just fitness content. Uh, it's 30 days. Uh, all you need is about 30 minutes each and every day for all 30 days. Each week, uh, the program has variation and change. There's a different protocol and a different setup. Um, Every weekend, we've built in the foam rolling and the tissue stuff and the mobility, which I would say do every day. But if nothing else, um, on the weekend, it's going to be in there. You can ask us any questions. You get access to the private Facebook group. Again, we're doing the same grand prize. We'll fly the winner out here to Scottsdale. Give you guys a two free night stay at one of the resorts here. Uh, come into the gym, rip it with us. We'll do weekly prizes with all our sponsors as well. It's free for app members and anybody else. Uh, you guys can join it uh, just for the price of the app. So I think the site is going to be jeremyscottfitness.app slash 30 30 challenge 2024. The link's going to be in the show notes. So you can sign up there, check it out. Um, again, March the 18th. You guys can sign up today, submit all the before stuff, and then we can get you rocking and rolling. A-S-A-P. Uh, also, quick shout out from our friends at Just Meats. Again, if you guys want to hop on the Just Meats train, uh, again, grass-fed, no artificial colors, no bullshit, family ranch, comes right to your front door. You can freeze it. Uh, you can put it in the fridge. It's what we use at our house for weekly meals, usually uh, three or four nights a week. Uh, the code is jscott25 for 25 bucks off. I think we have the link here in the show notes as well, justmeets.com slash discount slash jeremy slash 15. Uh, you guys can, but anytime you can put that code in, uh, jscott25 to save you guys a couple of bucks. And there's all kinds of promos and things that we're running uh, throughout. So I personally like the teriyaki chicken and the teriyaki beef. Their brisket is legit as well. They have a bunch of awesome chicken, turkey, uh, and uh, beef options in there. Again, just makes life a little bit easier, a little bit faster for you guys to uh, be healthy, get quality proteins into your diet without having to do a bunch of uh, leg work on the side and rummaging around the grocery store each and every day. And you guys already know, this episode is brought to you by my friends at AG1. DrinkAG1.com slash Jeremy Scott gets you guys a year supply of free vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first order. Now, again, you already know where I'm going to go with this. This replaced my multivitamin probably six or seven years ago. Uh, One simple scoop. I travel with it. I was just on the road the other day, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, I took the travel packs with me, throw them in some water, shake it, slam it, and I'm good to go because it's tough to eat. Um, all your fruits and veggies every day when life is perfect, and especially when you travel and you're busy and you have things to do, it's really hard to get 10 servings of fruits and veggies in your life. So if you can't do that, eat as much real quality, organic, nutrient-dense food as possible, but on top of that, you cover the gaps in your nutrition with a simple scoop of AG1. Prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, support. There's so much in there to help the gut, which I can't talk about enough to build your immune system, but there's also magnesium, B vitamins, uh, adaptogens, vitamin C, zinc, and everything in between. So if you're interested and you want a free sample, 100% for free, 
I don't care what state, country, providence you live in. We'll get you a sample right to your front door. You can try it if you like it. Then we'll hook you up with all the free stuff from there. But please reach out to us wherever it is on uh, Apple, Spotify, if it's our email list, if it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, I don't care. Hit us up. We'll send you the free samples. You can try them. And if you like it, you can just check out drinkag1.com slash Jeremy Scott for the year supply of free vitamin D3 and K2 and the five free travel packs with your first order. But ask if you want to try it before you buy it. Uh, other than that, uh, just rocking and rolling through life here. Uh, our mastermind group is still crushing. If you guys are looking to kind of change your life, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, looking to do something a little bit different in your career, uh, the Built Different Mastermind Group link is in the show notes here, jeremyscottfitness.com slash built-different-mastermind. My man, Dave DiLorenzo, and I obviously run that group together. He's built an amazing multi, multi, multi-million dollar business uh, through many years of hard work, and we share uh, all of our best practices. We have a bunch of amazing guest speakers come in, uh, a lot of successful business people. Um, not It's not just fitness. It's for kind of everything in between. If you're in the service industry at all, this can be beneficial for you. So check it out in the show notes if you guys want to get down with us inside there. All the other sponsors in the show notes here are friends at Dry Farms Wines, uh, JLab Pro, where we get our protein, turmeric, collagen, and krill oil, and my friends at Sleeve Sold Separately, where I get my joggers and hoodies and most of the fitness gear you guys see me rocking each and every day. Now, let's take a look here. We are talking about junk food. Uh, I'm going to try not to uh, waste a lot of time here because I'm on a time constraint as well. And I know many of you have super important things to do in life. Or maybe you're driving in a car and it's nice to just hear people um, talk shit. Uh, I actually was on the road on the last couple days for, uh, as a, I did a speaking event uh, for this high alpha a CEO group, super cool people um, at this ranch. I'm going to butcher the name. It's like uh, it's like a Tangay Verde Ranch uh, down there past Tucson. I'm sure I butchered the name of it. But uh, awesome place, awesome venue. Uh, the suite they gave me was awesome. It looked like just like kind of an Adobe style uh, normal structure. And then you walk into it, um, huge fireplace, floor to ceiling, huge main space, uh, awesome uh, bedroom, huge bathroom. Just a really cool setup, uh, probably about 100 horses down there, uh, cattle, you name it. Uh, they have horseback riding, they do a cowboy cookout, a lot of uh, a lot of awesome stuff there for sure. And you're about 14, 15 miles off of the, any main road, so there's no noise pollution. It's uh, super calming, super relaxing, uh, weather ended up being nice. But again, for me, it was about a two and a half hour drive after being at work at five in the morning, dropping my puppy off. Uh, at Monica's so she could watch the puppy because this dog cannot be uh, on its own because one day I was outside in the backyard just chilling and the dog fell in the pool and my dog does not know how to swim yet so it was me um, playing uh, lifeguard and lifesaver which was uh, you know get your heart rate up uh, real quick but anyways I had to drop my dog off uh, set up my senior dog here to be on her own we have cameras so we could watch her and she's fine on her own she sleeps most of the day but um, it was a lot uh, a lot of running around, a lot of uh, busy work stuff in between, and uh, the driving stuff just, uh, it smokes me. It really does. And uh, But my point is, I listen to podcasts uh, all on the way. I basically listen to uh, Zack Snyder, um, who obviously, if you guys know, he directed uh, 300, Watchmen, uh, Justice League, uh, talking to Rogan just about his directing process and kind of his story. So Sometimes it's nice to hear people just uh, have a conversation and uh, and ramble on when you want to turn your brain off, and maybe this can be that for you guys. Or if you really want to learn how to stop eating junk food and the marketing tricks that uh, you know make processed food seem super good for you, listen away. Uh, before, uh, real fast before I do jump into that again, Heather's uh, great. Uh, she's a unicorn. She's been gone all week, and I realize how much stuff she does do because man, this sucks. Uh, doing all of the things around our house and for our business and uh, with these animals with nobody else. So shout out to her. But she's great at sending me these little um, like motivational quotes or little phrases she must find on Instagram or these daily messages. Uh, and this one is uh, from uh, Zana Keithley. And I'm going to read it to you guys because I it's important, and you know, if you're anybody who's you know walking through a storm right now, um, 
this is a good message for you. And it goes, and I quote, it feels like upheaval. It feels like destruction. It feels like an excavation straight through your heart. Like every painful thing you've ever buried suddenly rising back to the surface. An ambush, and you're not sure you're strong enough to withstand it. It's heavy, and it's hard, and it hurts. And you want to run, but this time you can't. There is no running. That's because something deep within you knows it's time. That you're ready. That the storm is here for a reason. And on the other side, something really beautiful awaits. Something real. Life that we've always been worthy of living but you can't just bypass this part. These old stories can't come with you into the next chapter, and it hurts, and I know, but you're worth going to war for, you're worth fighting for, and you're worthy of knowing the freedom that awaits you on the other side of this metamorphosis. You're not breaking, you're not falling apart. This is the moment when everything changes. This is your opportunity to unravel the false narratives and leave behind all of those things for good. This is your revolution, this is the season of your becoming. Uh, I thought that was great, uh, for sure. Because again, we've all been, we've all been through shit. Uh, we've all had family members and friends go through stuff. Uh, not to get super depressing on a on a junk food podcast, but uh, a good buddy of mine, uh, part of the Nop Tourney. If you guys uh, follow me for any amount of time. Uh, you know, it's kind of like our alumni brotherhood. This thing I was part of. I mean, I'm part of it until I'm dead, but. Uh, for 25 straight years, uh, we got together uh, at least once per year, uh, played in this, you know, our, our version of a, you know, NCAA kind of basketball tournament uh, for us. And I've known this dude since I was shit, I don't know, eight or nine years old. And he literally just shared on, uh, he's got, you know, four kids, literally just shared on Facebook yesterday. His wife has a, a brain tumor um, that they found on her uh brainstem because she wasn't feeling good and and things just weren't, you know, they weren't optimal for her and they didn't know if it was, uh, you know, she was having a hard time with swallowing and some eating stuff and they thought maybe it was tonsils and that. Went and got an MRI. There's a a brain tumor on her brainstem. She's younger than me um, in her late 30s. And, uh, you know, luckily enough, they uh, they live in Minnesota, so they're able to get into the Mayo Clinic and, and get some treatment and things started. I believe as early as even uh, next week, but you know, hey, I guess I'm at the the point of life where you start to hear shit like that and you see things like that, and it just, I don't know, man. It uh, it's a wake up call, but it's also just a, it's a sobering thing, you know, because you start to realize you're not going to be here forever. Uh, you're not invincible. Your friends and family aren't invincible. Um, Father Time's undefeated with all these things, and so. Just having perspective if uh, if you're going through a journey right now and, and things seem, you know, like they're tough and uh, it seems like you'll never get out of it, just know it's, you will. Um, and I have to keep telling myself that too, even with the things that I roll through in my life, like everything is temporary. Uh, nothing is going to be permanent. And if it's the end, it's the end, you know, and, you know, what are you going to do, you know, right? And if it's not, then... You just got to keep fighting and kind of pushing through each day. And I know it's really tough uh, when you're having a a physical battle, you know, uh, with your body or a mental struggle with your body or an emotional one or maybe a combination of all of them because they all do bleed together. And that's all part of being healthy uh, and being fit. So if you're you're in the shit right now and you're going through hell, um, all I can say is just keep going. And that's the same thing I kind of just tell myself each and every day. And there's days where I don't want to get up and do certain things and I just force myself to do the best I can with what I have that day, and you just live to to fight another day and just be grateful for, you know, the things that you do have and try not to focus on um, the shit that you don't have and all the shit that is going wrong and, and could be better in your life. And I know it's, again, uh, preaching to the choir here, it, I, it's really hard to do. Uh, trust me. Uh, there's days where Heather's got to be the one to remind me, or my family has to be the ones to remind me. I do my best to be the voice for you guys, but I'm a human being, and you know when uh, friends of mine are, are really going through it, and when I am, and family members are, it's tough, man. It just is, and it's as you get older, you realize like that's it's part of life, and uh, it's not the fun part, it's not the easy part, and it's not the part we talk about, and it's not the part that uh, they share with you. When you're, when you're 25 years old and you think you're fucking bulletproof and then you get older and you realize 
you're not, and uh, the people around you aren't. So if you guys are going through a struggle, just keep moving and just take it one day at a time. Sometimes it's, it's minute by minute, hour by hour, um, however you can break it down, but just keep things moving, and uh, and we'll all get there together. So with that said, talking about um, junk food, how it works, what to do about it, um, again, from a marketing standpoint, it makes it seem like the food is good for you. Um, no matter how they break it down, if you look at you know organic macaroni and cheese, I don't know if that's any better than normal macaroni and cheese, right? In terms of ingredients, sure, but uh, in terms of uh, caloric intake, they're probably damn near the same uh, for the most part. Uh, they do the they do really a really good job of uh, of phrasing things and selling you stuff, bright colors, cartoon characters, celebrities. Uh, positive associations, phrases like take a break and you're worth it. Um, they kind of tap into your need for, you know, self-care. Like, oh, you deserve to eat this. And obviously, you know, the buzzwords that with certain foods it matters for sure, but other ones it doesn't, like organic and vegan and gluten-free, it creates this illusion of, uh, of being healthy. Like, oh, it's vegan ice cream versus, you know, dairy ice cream. And now, you can go in terms of micronutrients, which ones do or don't have more benefit. But if you look at like Reese's peanut butter cups versus, let's say the Justin's peanut butter cups, the ingredients um, of the Justin's are, are better for sure. So I'm not saying that. So if you're going to opt for them, opt for the Justin's. But if you look at the calories, they both, you know, per, you know, peanut butter cup, both have about 220 calories. The fats are, you know, a little bit higher on the Justins. They're 15 versus 13 for like a Reese's. Saturated fat is higher on the Justins versus the Reese's. The carbohydrates are comparable. The sugar is a little bit higher on the Reese's, and the protein's about the same. Now, so again, I'm not saying they're exactly the same, but if you think, hey, I'm having a healthy treat, you know, with this Justin's peanut butter cup, and I'm being super unhealthy with the Reese's, you're not. 100% right, you're not 100% wrong, and you know, there's a time and place for all these things, but just know they're real comparable, other than ingredients, and I do think ingredients matter, so I do think eating things that are organic uh, matters, but again, you're not going to magically be super healthy and fit and lose a ton of weight if you opt for you know, the vegan ice cream versus the, the Ben and Jerry's ice cream. If of all things, or even at the end of the day, the calorie intake is probably comparable, also, big portions um, in America for sure. Uh, convenience, you know, uh, we're getting a good deal. Well, we we are a sucker for a good deal, you know. With processed foods, you're often getting more volume and more calories. Um, and who doesn't want more for less, right? So if you look at like a burger and a fries and a soda versus a you know a chicken salad and uh, some water you're getting way more calories and bang for your buck when you go the, obviously, burger and fries route versus, like, something from salad to go. Um, and that's what we do. We're a sucker for a deal, and uh, the bigger portions convince us it's what we should be doing and it's a better option for us. And, again, a lot of us, you know, uh, grew up that way, finish everything on your plate, and, and people always hunting out for the deals. And I'm like, yeah, it might cost you more, Um to eat less or it might cost you more to, to make a better choice. But at the end of the day, I think it's saving you. It's saving you money. It's saving you time. It's saving you effort, obviously, um, with the work you put in the gym. And of course, you know, variety of things makes us want things a lot more. When we have a lot of different tastes to choose from, um, we're going to take it, right? Like, if you think about when it comes to processed foods versus uh, just basic real food, I, I use this example a lot. I use it at my talk um, actually this week. It's hard to overeat apples, like a single food, like an apple. Most of you guys have probably never ate, you know, five or six or seven apples at a time. Most of you have probably never eaten two apples back to back. Some of you might, but very few of you do. Um, it's way easier to overeat foods that have a variety of flavors and textures um, to kind of touch your palate. You know, um, it's hot, it's cold, it's uh, crunchy, it's smooth. There's so many things going on. So it's like, hey, if I'm going to eat a bag of, uh, you know, chips or a bag of trail mix, well, now it's like I got peanuts and chocolate and raisins and all these things combined. So it's way 
easier to overeat a bag of trail mix than it is to overeat an apple. Because again, there's much more variety there, much more, uh, I guess, hyper, you know, palatable. And uh, that's what we do. We go for the variety. Also, if you multiply the, the flavors at once, you get this, you know, kind of mouth party going on. Like a long, a long time ago, um, humans, we used to prioritize calorie dense foods, you know, to help us obviously survive. And today, like we manufacture and we have these calorie dense, hyper palatable and easy accessible junk foods. And the anatomy is almost irresistible, right? Like if you look at the stimuli stacking, like why and people say sugar is, is so addictive. And I don't think sugar just by itself, I think sugar mixed with fat and salt, that becomes the appeal. And then obviously that you can go off of temperature and taste and texture and those things. And so if you look at combining all of these treats, like a salted caramel brownie, they're damn near irresistible if that's what you're into, because they have salt, they have sugar, they have fat, and they have a combination of those things with the texture that reels you in. And if you look at the big five, like to make uh, mass market processed foods, here's what they have. Calorie dense, usually high in sugar and fat. They're intensely flavored. Um, they're immediately delicious. So it's like love at first bite, right? And then they melt down easily and the food almost dissolves in your mouth. Like uh, if you guys ever had like a hot crispy cream donut, you don't even have to chew it. It just melts. Um, and it's easy to eat and there's no effort uh, involved in chewing. And there's actually, uh, I don't have the, the list here and I'm not going to say it. I want to get into some shit. But like a major restaurant chain actually injects their chicken with a sauce to, to flavor it and tenderize it so it requires uh, less chewing. Crazy, right? So that's what gets you in the game. And that's why things are so tough. It's not just sugar. Um, it's salt, fat, and sugar, obviously, combined. You know, the cakes, the cookies, um, all the things that, you know, we love and tend to go kind of crazy over. If you want to get into specifics, well... Jeremy, I know because I like X, Y, and Z, and I eat X, Y, and Z, and I drink X, Y, and Z, and this is the thing that really, you know, um, has been, you know, crushing me and uh, dragging me down uh, over time. So here's what we do. Uh, one, seven ways to stop eating junk food. I'm going to kick off with the very first one. Notice your chewing. We've done a whole podcast uh, on chewing and walking you through uh, how things go. Um, but I think slowing things down and, and chewing and being mindful of how many times you chew stuff does help. It's easier to overeat when the, the food is easy to chew. Um, a fun experiment, compare like how many chews it takes you to do swallowed uh, food versus uh, processed food. Now, processed food, you're probably going to chew 10 times or less. If it's whole foods, you're probably looking at like 25 times or more. Also consider like how long it takes to eat each food, how satisfied you feel afterwards, and how much you want to keep eating. Obviously, things like beef jerky, uh, the real ones do take a significant amount of time. Again, like I mentioned, like a Krispy Kreme donut doesn't really take any chewing at all. So again, it's much easier to woof down a bunch of stuff when you have to do almost no effort to get it into your gut and into your system. The second thing, evaluate your pantry. Um, to change the way you grocery shop and eat, you have to be aware of what kind of foods you buy and why you buy them, who you buy them for, how you store them, and what foods are, you know, kind of your triggers, and which ones are you more likely to overeat on versus, you know, eat in moderation. So you got to think, like, how many junk foods are marketed as health foods when you're in the store? Quite a few. How many celebrity endorsements for foods do you see? Or famous people? Or people saying, hey, I eat this because it helps me do that? And the reality is they're a paid spokesperson. What, you know, self-care promises do you find? You know, give yourself a break. This is good for you. These types of, of wording and terminology on the food. And list the number of treat foods um, that you have in your kitchen. Look at the stuff that you have in your pantry. Look at the stuff you have in your freezer. Look at the stuff you have in your fridge. How much of it is real food versus like minimally, you know, Minimally processed, medium to like highly processed foods. And again, if you're a person who struggles with potato chips, I probably wouldn't keep potato chips in the house. If you're somebody who struggles with Girl Scout cookies, I probably wouldn't buy 10 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. It's just like, you know, out of sight, out of mind. And if it's around and it's within an arm's reach when you're hangry, hungry, tired, stressed, something triggers you, 
you're much more inclined to grab it and eat it, overeat on it, um, versus blueberries, uh, bananas, apples, uh, carrots, hummus, these types of things. The third one, uh, touched on it here a little bit already. Just look at, you know, look for your habit patterns. Um, habits are powerful, um, for better, for worse. We have a habit of using food for reasons other than, you know, physical hunger, which can lead to overeating. Obviously, there's a trigger um, that sets us off. There's a behavior, and then there's a reward. And if you can identify your triggers, you'll be in a much better place. So a trigger can be a feeling. Um, It can be the time of day. It can be a social setting. It can be a place. It can be a thought pattern. I've been through a rough day. I deserve this. People default to this for food and alcohol or sometimes both, and I get it. Uh, I've been there before, too. Uh, it's not a healthy practice, but we've all probably been guilty of it, some people more than others. Uh, but when you have an urge to overeat, ask yourself, what am I feeling? You know, What time is it? Who am I with? Where am I? And what thoughts am I having? Um, the self-knowledge will help you prevent t- triggers um, eating in the future, if you can just stop yourself in the moment, and realize like why you're doing it. And I always talk about selling yourself in the moment. You sell yourself on making this choice versus this choice. You sell yourself on you know grabbing uh, healthy food versus you know cinnamon toast crunch. Like you're selling yourself in the moment of of why you do or don't need something. And I always say, you know, it's live to eat another day, you know, delay the gratification if you can, if you have something coming up and you know and today's not a day you plan on eating, you know, a piece of cake, maybe you put it off for the other day and ask yourself, like, you know, what thoughts am I having? Why do I really feel like I need this? And is this something that I really do need today? And is this something that's going to move me closer or further away from my goals today? Now, the, the fourth one here, you got to find good habits that support your goals. So again, once you know your triggers, um, and once you can kind of disrupt the cycle of trigger, eat, reward, you replace that eating with an activity that supports your goals. Now, again, this is easier said than done. For most of us, the most effective stress relievers, if you can obviously exercise and play sports, uh, if it's reading, maybe it's listening to music, um, maybe if you're somebody who's religious and it's you're praying, you're spending time with friends and family, you go get a massage, you go walking outside. I'm a huge fan of being outdoors. If you can ruck outside, even better meditation, yoga, any creative hobbies, if it's painting, if it's writing. I know that's not as sexy um, as eating cinnamon rolls and having four glasses of wine, but these habits can boost like the neurotransmitters like serotonin and GABA and uh, oxytocin, which can calm down the stress response and induce a feeling of well-being. And again, if you can stack up enough wins... Over time, you're just going to keep winning. Are you going to win every battle? No. You'll break down. You'll have a drink. You'll have some food. That's, It's human uh, to err and, and, and fall off track. Like, I'm not against that. Like, it's just, it, that's part of life. But if you're doing it consistently, then it becomes a habit. Then it becomes a choice. And if you can more often than not swap out these overeating exercises for other stress relievers, you're going to be successful, but it's just, it's getting the first win and it's getting the second win and it's showing yourself that you can go without and you can delay gratification and you don't need to eat these things and you have control over them. They don't have control over you. Now, number five, putting quality above quantity. This is where, you know, people get the best deal. It's like, you know, uh, when we play like, you know, sports in college, you'd stop at like, uh, shout out to the Midwest, like Pizza Ranch or like Golden Corral, and you're like eating a buffet, and it's like, well, I'm at a buffet, I got to get the you know most bang for my buck. That's putting, you know, quantity over quality. Feeling like I have to eat my money's worth. That's why I'm not a, a fan of like these fancy, even the fancy brunches at like these resorts that Heather and I get invited to. It's like here, have a Easter brunch. It's a hundred dollars a person. It's like, how much food do I got to fucking eat? You know, to get a hundred bucks worth. It seems like it'd be a lot, right? And that's where it's like, I'm not a fan of that. I'd rather just like order the menu items and keep it going. And not that I don't love the idea of it, but I know how I'm going to feel afterwards. Like just a bloated, you know, bag of garbage and I'm worthless the rest of the day. So really putting quality above the quantity, obviously processed foods we know use cheaper ingredients, uh, making it possible to sell large amounts at really low prices. 
Um, it sucks that it is more expensive to eat healthier. It's not impossible, but it does cost more. I'm not going to sit here and, and bullshit you guys and say that uh, it doesn't. But if you look at Whole Foods, they provide high-quality nutrition, um, and you only pay once, right? Like, it's carrots, it's steak, it's chicken, it's uh, oranges, you name it. Now, if you look at the highly palatable processed foods, jumbo sizes, seem like a deal because they offer high quantity, but eventually you pay what we like to call like the health tax in the form of, you know, gaining fat you don't want, uh, metabolic problems, uh, poor health, uh, on top of numerous other things. That's what I mean by when you, you buy real food, you only pay once. When you're constantly eating the highly processed shit, you're going to pay a health tax multiple times over. Now, again, I'm not against having a cheap meal and, and having treats and, and social fun things you eat with friends because you want to eat them. That's cool. It's not what you do you know, some of the time that matters most. It's what you do most of the time that matters most. So an easy hack here, again, like this, all this piece is coming from our friends at Precision Nutrition. Jennifer um, Boxerman actually uh, threw this bad boy together. Um, it's a real kind of simple traffic light system to put quality first. And again, you can do this any way you want. Um, these are just tactics to help you guys if you do struggle with the junk food and if, if nutrition and eating is kind of like your bugaboo, use the traffic light system to put quality first. So make your list of like red, yellow, and, and green light foods if you want to go this far. And maybe it, it might just be red light foods because you might already know the other ones and you're fine, but it's the hard stop food, the ones that you know you can't have around. So the red foods are like the no-gos, the ones that you tend to just go bonkers on, the ones that you overeat on, the ones that make you feel sick or, and don't meet your health goals, whether that's ice cream and cookies or M&Ms or Doritos or burgers or pizza or whatever it may be. And then the yellow foods are the ones that aren't like the worst choices, but if you eat too much of them, you might have regrets. And so for a lot of people, uh, if I'm just I'm being myself here, if it was like cheese or uh, nut butters or even like the quote-unquote healthier um, protein bars, like the Perfect Bars or the Perfect Cups and those things, or the Justins. Um, they're not the worst choices, but if you eat too many, the calories get out of control real quick, real fast. And in terms of the green foods, now these ones are the nutritious foods that make your body and mind feel good. You eat these whenever you want. Again, this is real food, salmon, peppers, eggs, chicken, uh, you name it. All the, all the real foods you know, they run, they swim, they fly, they grow from the ground, um, all the stuff we talk about. Now, again, red foods are the no-gos. The yellow ones are the ones that eh, can get rowdy, and the green foods are the ones you basically can eat until the cows come home because it's really hard to overeat on real food. It just if you're doing everything else right, that's probably not going to be your issue. I've never met anybody, you know, who came in and they're 80 pounds overweight because they ate too many oranges. You know, it just it just wasn't the thing. Um, and the list is going to be unique to you. You know, whether it's chocolate chip cookies for red um, for you, but your friend it might be green. You know, because you got that weird old friend who can eat one chocolate chip cookie a day and they'll put the rest back. That's not who I am, but some people can do that. It is a a very special skill that I am 100% jealous of. Now going into number six, kind of with the along the chewing guidelines here, slow things down. Um, if changing the foods you eat really freaks you out and you're not ready to jump there yet, allow yourself to eat, you know, whatever you want, but do it slowly uh, and be mindful of it when you do eat. Right? I'm not telling you you have to revamp your whole life. If you eat fast food seven days a week, start doing it six days a week. You know, but be mindful uh, even when you do do it. Like sit at a table. Um, if you can, use real dishes. As weird as that sounds, just putting it in real dishes and looking at it and preparing it like it was a real meal. Eating in a calm environment with little to no distractions. I eat in front of the TV a lot. Um, I don't, you know, historically watch a ton of TV or a ton of shows. So when I come home, Heather and I just kind of sit down. Our dogs, uh, you know, beg, borrow, and, and try to steal all of our food. Uh, part of the game of being, a, you know, a dog you know, parent, if you will. Uh, but I do sit there and sometimes I'll eat in the kitchen. Sometimes I'll eat at the, our dining room table. But a lot of times just have a calm environment. We sit down, we chat, not a bunch of distractions. 
Uh, I will say an easy hack is to put your utensils down between bites. That really will slow you down. Most people never do this. And I would say set aside at least 20 minutes uh, for the meal. Even if it only takes you a handful of minutes to eat, have 20 minutes. Just have it be a dedicated time because you care about it. Um, And obviously you're trying to choose whole, real, nutrient-dense, fiber-rich foods that take time for you to chew. Um, Proteins are great for this. Um, vegetables are also great for this. Fruits are great for this. And again, if you can eat till you're about 80% full, and that's why I'd say if you can slow things down, it'll help you guys, um, let your, you know, your gut, um, catch up with your brain and your eating habits. And you won't find yourself eating, you know, way, you know, beyond fullness, if you will. And the last one here, just be nice to yourself. Um, as simple as it sounds, um, you can't be your own worst enemy. You're not going to be perfect. Nobody is. I think the, the, the perfect thing really does hold you back. Um, and then people do go off the rails. Well, I wasn't perfect today, so fuck it. I'll eat whatever today, and then I'll start tomorrow. It's like, well, if you had one flat tire in your car, you're not going to slash the other three tires. You're going to keep those tires rolling and just obviously keep the one tire and fix it and keep things moving. Same thing with the meals. If you eat like shit at lunch, you can still have a great dinner. And be kind to yourself. The world's hard enough as it is. And obviously self-criticism and the crash dieting may work for some people in the short term. And if you're a person who could talk shit to themselves and you're okay with it, then that's fine. But most people aren't great doing that. Um, We typically tend to be harder on ourselves than anybody else ever would be. Um, And I think long term, that negative self-talk really does sabotage your goals. And so approach your eating with, you know, honesty, right? Like, how are you really behaving around food? Um, and the more accurate you can perceive yourself, the better you can be supporting yourself to make a real change. You know, saying, oh, I'm stupid, I'm a failure, I'm dumb, I'm awful, that doesn't help. I don't think it's probably true. Um, just be honest with yourself, the effort you're putting in. How much of the food you're eating is real, high-quality, nutrient-dense food? How much is it is is processed garbage food that's really not helping you? And why are you, you know, defaulting one way or the other? And also kindness, right? Like work with yourself instead of against yourself. Like be an advocate for yourself. Don't be the one that drags you down, especially when you don't make a perfect choice. And obviously curiosity, you know, explore your habits um, with openness and interest and and don't be so, you know, super self-critical of everything you do. I think if you have, you know, that attitude of support and non-judgment, you're more likely to reach your goals and keep things obviously moving forward. So again, this is not rocket science, but it really is just simple uh, kind of mental and behavioral habits that can help you kick, you know, kind of the junk food. Because a lot of times uh, adults are busy. You got a million things going on. You're eating food in the car at your desk. Um, You're with friends at a party. Um, You're waiting for your partner at a bar. You're standing over the kitchen sink eating food. In In the modern world we live in, it seems like you know, there's no context that's not perfect for crunching on, you know, cheap, uh, delicious junk food and pounding more drinks than we need to. And if you're like me um, and you're an overeater by nature, how often do you really keep your indulgences to just like one handful or just a couple of bites or just a taste? I mean, for me, once the package is open, all bets are off and I tend to eat much more than I want to. And sometimes it's just the entire bag of chips or in the entire sleeve of cookies. And then you have that kind of like, you know, eater's remorse. I've gotten way better as i gotten older because I just don't want to feel like shit anymore. But still, I have lapses where things will go crazy if people drop me off stuff or we go to like our favorite restaurant and we pick up a couple of things. So again, just know the food industry has expertly uh, created cheap, easily accessible products for your taste buds and, your, and, and made it damn near impossible for your brains to resist. And when you pair that with like perfectly engineered lab created flavors that have emotionally appealing marketing campaigns and uh, food manufacturer products that make you feel powerless in the face of like the delicious uh, tastiness that comes your way, this goes for alcohol too. Um, You got to really fight against it um, because these companies and these brands, they're not stupid. They're very, very smart. They take advantage of the evolutionary preferences of certain types of textures and flavors And your brains are actually hardwired to want more of these kind of artificial concoctions. And so, while it's not a problem for everybody, um, it's a problem for most of us. And 
I know junk food's delicious, and it's a fun treat, and I think treating yourself and having cheats is great from time to time. Um, but it's a big problem for a lot of people, and it creates a vicious cycle of craving and guilt and feeling out of control, which leads to you know a poor mental health about how we talk about ourselves and, and how we feel about our bodies and our lives and, and how we are looking and moving and feeling. So if you guys can take these you know, seven things, you know, put them in the bank um, to hopefully help you. Just think, notice how you're chewing, evaluate your pantry, look at the habit patterns, find some support goals to swap out for what you're currently doing. Always choose quality food over the quantity of the food. I know it's tough. Slow things down and be nice to yourself along the way and just know it's a journey uh, and it's a process. And, and everybody you see who's super fit, we all started in the same place. We all started on day one in the gym, day one in the kitchen, learning selling ourselves on why we should be, you know, healthy versus unhealthy and just trying to create little micro habits daily over time to eventually be a healthy fit person who who eats better more often than not, who skips drinks um, more often than not, and somebody who eats things because it makes their body feel and move. And then the byproduct is you look a certain way versus just eating off of uh, being stressed and hangry and tired and, and giving in to, you know, each and every little want that you have. So hopefully um, that helps some of you guys and you got a couple of uh, key takeaways to help you kind of stop overeating junk food and and a couple of ways you can keep it in check and and have it in control um, as you move through the the crazy, busy, hectic um, world of uh, being an adult. So if you guys have any questions on this or anything else in the episode, please just ask. I'm happy to answer. If you're on Apple Podcasts, drop out a five-star, leave a comment. We'd appreciate it. The same thing for Spotify. It means a lot to us. If you love us, drop us a Google review. We'll always take that. And again, if you guys do want to join the 30 for 30 challenge, the link's going to be in the show notes here. You can join free for app members. Everybody else, you can join for a couple of pennies a day. If you want a free sample of AG1, hit me up. We'll send it right to your front door. I don't care where you live. And if you want any of our other um, sponsored discounts, whether it be Just Meats or JLab Pro or Sleep Sold Separately, the links are in the show notes. I'm happy to touch base with you guys and get you hooked up with any of the free stuff and discounts from them as well. So uh, I thank you guys. Most likely I'll be popping on um, probably next week here. If you're watching on YouTube, as always, thank you. We appreciate the support. Um, hopefully Heather comes back soon because, man, it's um, running me ragged here trying to do uh, all the things that she does. So shout out to all the the partners out there who are who are unicorns um, that do things for their other partner because uh, you realize it uh, much more once they're gone uh, and they're not here. So you guys have an amazing uh, rest of your Friday or whenever you are listening to this. And uh, until next time, eat well, train hard, be nice to people, and please, you guys, keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.